Before we begin, I have uploaded my first official video on my second channel yesterday, so you can check that video out in the description after this video. Let's begin. We never like to see our favourite YouTubers upset, but unfortunately it's a normal human response, and there will be times where even the happiest YouTubers will go through a depressing time through their lives, and their videos won't be as joyful as they usually are, but instead videos of them upset and even crying. This isn't a bad thing, and I think it's a good thing for YouTubers to show what's going on through their lives, and how it makes them feel. Here are 5 YouTubers that cried on camera. Tommy MC 2010 breakdown video is where he describes that he's been attacked by Leafy's fans. The video showcases Tommy crying on camera, explaining that him and his family were suffering from death threats. Fortunately, this video gave Tommy a lot more internet fame than he ever had in his many years of doing YouTube videos beforehand. Hello folks, some people are threatening my life, threatening my family, and all I wanted to do was inspire people. Some leafy guy or team star people are threatening me. And all I wanted to do was inspire people. That's all. This is the last video that you're gonna see from me for a while. Can't take it anymore. I just wanna say to all my fans, I love you. And thank you for all you've done. I just wanted to entertain people. Thank you. This is Tommy and C20 for the last time saying, I love you. I'm keeping you on the inside back. Jacksepticeye is one of YouTuber's most popular gamers with over 11 million subscribers. Unfortunately, his life hasn't all been happy, as in one of his let's plays of That Dragon Cancer, Jack describes his grandmother's last words in hospital and reveals the saddest moment through his life, which was when he was talking to his grandma for about an hour until his grandma says something that Sean will never forget. Unfortunately, Sean's grandma passed a short time after, but she passed peacefully, surrounded by family and friends. This is sad because it reminds me of the, the last few days when my granny was alive and she didn't die of cancer or anything but she, she was locked away in like a hospital for the last few months of her life and she didn't really recognize anybody anymore. She was, she was super like aware of everything. Oh god, sorry that's gonna sound terrible. She was super aware of everything like her entire life and right up until she went into hospital but as soon as she went into hospital and she was starting to get treated for um I, I can't remember what it was she had she had something in her leg that spread through her body and affected her blood but she was in hospital for a few months before she died and her mind just completely went and I remember going in one time with my sister to see her and we were talking to her, and my granny was like, Is Sean gonna come in to visit us? And I, I was sitting right next to her, and she didn't know who I was. Uh, that was really sad. Again, she didn't die of cancer or anything, it's just reminding me of it. And I need to move on, or I won't be able to move on. Fortunately, PewDiePie hasn't suffered any traumatic events to force a breakdown on camera, but instead Felix, on very few occasions, has been so invested into video games that some sad twists and endings have made him cry. For example, The Walking Dead game, where Felix also accidentally revealed his browser history revealing porn, but that's a topic for another day. <laughs> oh, <fuck that. laughs> 
The Syndicate project has been surrounded by a lot of drama which I think has been blown way out of proportion as Tom is a happy go lucky guy who just wants to make entertaining videos and is way too innocent to want to conflict any damage over the internet. Unfortunately Syndicate has suffered family losses through his life and unfortunately his grandma was a victim of motor neurons disease and seeing Tom describe her last moments is heartbreaking to see as he breaks down and cries on camera which is what any loving family member would do. The room I was like I wonder how I'm gonna feel, I wonder how I'm gonna see because I've never seen someone in hospital in that state and then um, when I got in I got in there my grandma was just hooked up machines everywhere like breathing machines everything like that it was like the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life and she was just sat there in her bed and you could, she could see me, she knew me and everything. And she wasn't that, she wasn't there, there and then about to pass, up, pass away or anything, but it was like the saddest thing that I ever remember seeing. And then I was just like, fuck, you know, there's nothing I can do with all this success that I've done for my job. I can't, can't save my grandma. I prepared, I prepared myself massively. <clears throat> I'm not I, a I prepared fucking myself massively, wizard! Um, to see her. And then I just couldn't handle it, really. I couldn't. I'm not a fucking Sorry, wizard! I'm a massive fucking crybaby now, but I don't really talk about it. It just got worse from there. Like, it just got worse. And then I got um, a phone call off my... Um, oh, no. My dad came into my office when I was... Um, I think I'd even just stopped live streaming. I'd just finished making a video. And then um, my... Um, my dad came in the room and said that... Um, sorry. It was just like, um, your mum's been on the phone. And my dad and my mum don't speak. Don't fuck yourself! Your grandma's really bad. Um, this ambulance is wrong. And, um, it's my I'M NOT A FUCKING WIZARD! This might be the last time you see her. So, I literally got round as quick as I could. There was an ambulance, there was paramedics upstairs. Um, I ran straight upstairs ju just to see her. Wait, oh. if she would have, if she would have passed away, if she, like, if she would have passed away without seeing me, I would have never left leaving myself. Oh. I went upstairs as quick as I, go I could. I just looked at her, there was paramedics everywhere, and she still was awake, I could still see her me, and I was just happy that she saw me, and then I knew I needed to get out of the room because they needed the space downstairs whilst they were doing it, and then they came downstairs and said, she was, she's gone unconscious, after I'd gone downstairs. <coughs> Sorry. So she, she, she's gone unconscious, and um... I was just like, fuck, so all the family was just panicking, like, wondering what they could do to help her. And then they said they were going to take her outside to the, um, to the ambulance, uh, take her outside to the ambulance and see, like, what they could, what they could do is if they could use a machine in there to resuscitate her. They had to carry her downstairs. And she was gone. She was just completely gone. <laughs> completely gone. <laughs> and it was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Matthew Santoro was involved in a scandal a short time ago surrounding him and his now ex-girlfriend Nikawaba. The relationship, to put it simply, did not end well, and through many weeks of abuse and torment, Matthew broke up with Nicole. However, the damage will never be forgotten as Matthew breaks down on camera, explaining the damage Nicole has already done to him. So no one wants to talk about it. But I'm making this video to tell you that you need to talk about it. Whether you're a man or a female, if somebody hits you, Tell somebody. Tell a family member. Tell a friend. Don't bottle it up. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out the video I made on my second channel in the description. I'll see you all next time and goodbye.